We all know about the Apple ecosystem, but Samsung has made a pretty impressive ecosystem of their own. And now with Google's recent launch of the Pixel Watch and the Pixel Buds Pro, we finally have a viable ecosystem there as well. You see, brands love to create ecosystems. First of all, to offer a better user experience, but more importantly for them, to sort of trap you in their ecosystem and to encourage users to become brand loyal by instead of shopping for earbuds versus phones versus watches, to shop one brand versus another. And once you find one pair of earbuds is better than the other, you're stuck in that ecosystem. So if you are an Android user, is the Galaxy ecosystem or the Pixel ecosystem actually better? And furthermore, what features do you miss if you try to mix and match them as opposed to just going with one ecosystem? I've been testing these ecosystems side by side for a while now, and I have the answer. So I wanna start off with what products we're actually talking about in these ecosystems. They're a lot larger than you think. It's not just a watch, a phone, and earbuds. Google obviously has been running pretty deep for a long time. The Google ecosystem is new in terms of products, but the software is pretty much everywhere on every device, even Apple devices. So looking at the hardware, first of all, what we're talking about in this video, we have the Pixel 7 Pro, but of course there are many other Pixel phones and Google does a good job of keeping the software pretty uniform. Then we have the Pixel Buds Pro. Of course, Google also has the Pixel Buds A, a more affordable pair that for the most part does a similar task. And then we have the Google Pixel Watch, but there's a lot more than just that. Like I mentioned before, we have the Google Nest products, connecting different things in your smart home from speakers to thermostats. And of course we can't forget the Google Chromebook. Now Google is coming out with a Pixel tablet very soon, but we can't talk about that yet because we don't have it. Now, the Galaxy ecosystem might seem a little bit wider at first. We have many, many more phones, including the Folds, the Flips, the S22 Ultra, the other S22s, but something to keep in mind is that the A-series phones, the Galaxy A53 and other more affordable devices from Samsung, sometimes lack some software and don't have the same capabilities as the flagships. Then as far as earbuds go, we have the Galaxy Buds Pro, the Galaxy Buds 2, and the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Of course, we have the Galaxy Watch 5, the 5 Pro, and, and the 4 classic, and one of the most important ones here is we do actually have a tablet. This is the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, one of the best tablets in the game. And of course, Samsung has their Galaxy Book Pro laptop, as well as Samsung TV, and a lot of other products as well. So that's a quick rundown of the main players on either side. But why not mix and match? If you really like, say, the Galaxy Watch 4 Classic for its rotating bezel, but you really like the software on the Pixel 7 Pro, why wouldn't you use those two together? Well, the truth is you can use them. They are compatible. And if you only had these products, you wouldn't know what you were missing. But the truth is Samsung is hiding some features on the Galaxy Watch 5, the 5 Pro, the 4 Classic that you won't get on non-Samsung phones. So even though the majority of the stuff out there is available, some of the main flagship features like an ECG, blood pressure monitoring, Samsung's AR emojis, that's not really a flagship feature, but you'll be missing that as well. And of course, remote smartphone camera controls, all of those are only available if you have a Samsung phone. Now, there are workarounds, there are mods you can do to these devices to make them compatible, but the truth is most people out there aren't looking to do that, they just want stuff that works. Similarly, if you look at the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro or the Galaxy Buds Pro, you'll be missing some features here as well, like 360 audio and Samsung's new high resolution codec that gives you, again, better resolution on your audio. In addition, you'll miss other things like seamless switching. And by this I mean, if I'm using the Galaxy Galaxy Buds 2 Pro to watch a movie on my Galaxy tablet. Then I get a phone call on my Galaxy phone. It'll automatically switch over to the phone call. I can answer the call, talk for a while, and whenever they hang up, it'll automatically switch back and start playing the movie again playing through the earbuds without having to tap anything. And this is obviously a feature to trap you in the ecosystem because the Pixel Buds don't do this. The Pixel Buds Pro have multi-point connectivity and allow you to switch seamlessly regardless of the brand. It could be a MacBook, it could be an iPad, it could be a Galaxy phone, it'll switch seamlessly no matter what. 
other than the watch and the earbuds, there's a lot more that ties you into the ecosystem, from One UI software on the tablets to also having Samsung Pay that's only available on Samsung phones, tracking down Galaxy Smart Tags, of course, the laptops have quick share features, they've got DeX, we've got quick connection with the Galaxy Buds on the laptop, and of course, like I said, with the tablets, you have app continuity with your phone and the ability to share your keyboard. But Google, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have a walled garden like that. They don't seem to put up as many barriers that prevent you from using their products with other devices out there, at least not yet. They have multi-point connectivity on the earbuds, like I said, the watch works with anybody and, and really works fine with anything, and the phone, of course, they're trying to make that as streamlined as possible with Android. Let's try to match up these products one-to-one. -one. Of course, Samsung has a million variations of every product, but matching up, up the best we can, let's start off with the earbuds. I made a full comparison between the Pixel Buds Pro and the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, but some of the highlights here, personally, I think the fit and comfort of the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro are better for me. I can go for long runs and they absolutely never fall out. The Pixel Buds Pro are also very comfortable, but it's a win for the Galaxy Buds. The sound and the active noise cancellation is better on the Galaxy Buds, and there are a lot of extra features in the Galaxy Wearable app that you can customize the Galaxy Buds with. But the Pixel Buds do have some advantages. I really like the way the case looks, and I really like some of the, the features with Google Assistant deep integration there, because of course Google is all about their Assistant, which you can't really understate that. When you're looking at hardware, a lot of these comparisons, Samsung does it better, but Google has better software. And then moving on to the Pixel Watch and the Galaxy Watch 5. I made a full comparison of these as well, and I highly recommend watching that. But so again, a summary here, I think the Pixel Watch from a design standpoint is better. I know this was controversial, people didn't like the way the Pixel Watch looked, but I think they really did a fantastic job of making this watch look really nice, feel extremely comfortable, and on top of that, the software really does a good job of hiding the bezel. And really almost no displays on here show that black bezel, unlike the Galaxy Watch, which really accents the black bezel by showing like a lot of white or yellow or, or full color watch faces that go all the way up to the bezel and just really highlight that black ring around there. So that's a win for the Pixel Watch. Otherwise, hardware perspective, durability, the Galaxy Watch is more durable because they do have more of a protective edge around the display, whereas the Pixel Watch, you're really not protected at all on that edge. Google did a really good job of making Wear OS 3 streamlined and smooth. They're both running their own versions of Wear OS 3, but again, the Pixel Watch really prioritizes Google Assistant, and that's something you're not really getting on the Galaxy Watch. In addition, I had some issues with the GPS, uh, sometimes not even starting to track my workouts on the Galaxy Watch. Sometimes it does that, sometimes it doesn't. It's a weird feature I talked about in a recent video, but between these two, it is a pretty close matchup and it comes down to your preferences. And then we have the phones. Focusing on the higher end ones, the S22 Ultra, which has a really nice S Pen in there. We also have the Galaxy Fold 4, which obviously gives you a massive display on the inside. I used this for a while and I really did like using it, but there were some drawbacks with either one of those. And the Pixel, the Pixel 7 Pro, I think is the winner. At least for me, I'm going to be using this for the entire next year because I really like the cameras on here. I like the software on here. I've always liked the features Google gives you from call screening and things like that. It just, it really has a lot in there that for me, I love the simplicity and I love what this is able to do without making it too noisy. And then of course we have the laptops, which the Chromebook is great. It's cheaper, it's lighter, it uses Google stuff, but the clear winner here, I think, by far is Samsung. The Samsung laptops like the Galaxy Book Pro are a really, you know, relatively high-end Windows laptop that gives you a lot of, of Samsung experiences without interfering with the Windows experience. You can use it as a regular Windows laptop and never even realize it's a Samsung device, or you can dig into a lot of the Samsung features like the deep integration with your phone, with messages, with connecting to your Galaxy Buds. And then last but not least, we have the tablets. The Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra is a fantastic laptop. While you have this on Samsung side, you really don't have much on the Google side. Okay, so right about now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Mike, come on, you've given high-level overviews of each of these pairs and then telling me to watch the full comparison, just, just tell me which one is the better ecosystem. And so I'll do that. I'll tell you which one's better in my opinion right now, and then I'll tell you what I'm using because it's slightly different. 
Okay, so this might be a weird comparison, but when you're donating blood, there's type O, which is the universal donor. So anybody can take a donation from type O and be totally fine. And then there's type AB, which you can only donate to type AB, but the benefit of being type AB blood is you can take donations from anybody. So you are in the best position possible. And when it comes to ecosystems, it's a lot like that. So Samsung is very much like type AB blood. Like if you have it, you can use anything in their ecosystem and it's perfectly fine, or you can use the Pixel products and integrate them in your ecosystem as well, and you miss out on no features. Like if you use the Pixel Watch or the Pixel Buds with the Galaxy phone, you effectively lose no features at all. It works really well. Whereas the Pixel ecosystem is very much like type O, the universal donor, but you can really only work with that. Like if you wanna use a Galaxy Watch with the Pixel phone, you're going to be missing out on some of those features, which is not to say you can't do it, but that's just the way it is. So what I'm actually using, like I said, I really do care most about the phone. I think that's the most important part of the ecosystem. And for me, the Pixel 7 Pro is going to be what I'll use. In addition to that, while the watches are a toss up, I still think the Galaxy watch is better. I'm going to continue wearing the Pixel, the Pixel watch just because it's so new and I really want to keep testing it and see how the software evolves. And then as far as earbuds, I'm going to throw you off here. I'm actually not using either of these because earbuds are something that don't really matter for the ecosystem. Instead, I'm using the Bang & Olufsen EX. These have multi-point connectivity, so they have that seamless switching functionality without being brand loyal in one specific ecosystem. The downside to this is that I really love the Tab S8 Ultra and I'm still using it, but I'm missing out on a lot of those Samsung features. So instead, I have to kind of convert everything in there to using more Google apps that work well together, like messages and, and a lot of things like that. But otherwise, that's kind of my setup right now. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think Google should do to compete with Samsung a little bit better. Do you want them to be more of a walled garden? Do you want them to add more products? Or are they doing everything just fine? If you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien. 